Sailors from the doomed naval ship Manawanui are being reunited with their families in Auckland tonight following their dramatic rescue on Sunday. Back in Samoa, focus remains on monitoring for possible environmental damage from the sunken vessel. Katrin Owen reports. A sea turtle struggles to make it through seaweed mixed with fuel and debris from Manawanui, which sunk off the island of Apollo. This is not good. Surf tour guide Brent Ross shot this video yesterday, about a nautical mile from the wreckage. He returned again this morning and says the small amount of fuel that was visible is already dispersing. Navy divers checked the disaster site this morning. We have determined that the ship is sitting stable on the bottom. Um, at about 30 metres of depth and uh, there is no liquids leaking from the ship at this stage. Commodore Arndal says debris includes loose cargo and crew equipment. Around 40 personnel are already on the ground helping with the cleanup, with reinforcements heading over shortly. Can I first say it's very distressing for all those that are seeing that um, and we are taking uh, every effort that we can to try and minimise the impact. And while initial assessments appear positive, Greenpeace says New Zealand will be stretched if it has to contend with a big contamination site. We'll probably have to ask for help from overseas um, because um, New Zealand doesn't have a lot of facilities to clean up oil spills either. Um, and Samoa, of course, has even fewer, no doubt. And there's still no word on what actually went wrong. Those questions will be resolved through the court of inquiry that is being set up. More immediately, though, the sailors and ship's personnel are being reunited with loved ones at Devonport's naval base. They are now home and are being um, supported again by um, psychological staff and uh, going through a really critical incident stress management debriefing process. Including the vessel's commanding officer, Yvonne Gray. Like everybody else, um, she too is a victim of this incident, um, so uh, a lot of stress and pressure, but what I can say is that she is there for her ship's company um, and she's doing a great job, um, and what we're now making sure is that she is getting the necessary support that she needs so that she too can process this uh, and then just continue on. The emotional, environmental and financial toll are yet to be revealed. Chris Battishill is a professor of coastal science at the University of Waikato and helped lead the RENA cleanup. I spoke to him a short time ago and started by asking how serious the environmental impact of the Manawanui sinking could be for Samoa. It could be very, very bad for the environment if all of that um, oil was to be lost um, quickly um, over a short period of time. It looks, however, as if um, uh, there's certainly leaks, but they're, they're not uh, excessive um, from what we're hearing, uh, which is some good news because it, it, it provides time uh, for salvage operators uh, to get down there and either secure any further leaks or um, uh, work their way into the fuel uh, system uh, so they can pump the material out. So the potential is there. Um, much depends on the weather's uh, the the weather windows of opportunity, as I should say, um, and the prevailing conditions on shore. So one thing I remember that was so devastating about the arena and the cleanup was that thick, clumped fuel that just suffocated everything. Is there less of a chance of that here then? Yeah, absolutely. You've described um, the heavy fuel oil from Rena really, really well. And it was that physical um, uh, smothering, which was really quite problematic. It made it a little bit easier to clean up on, on the beaches, on sandy beaches. But in the rocky reef areas in around uh, Tarangamwana, there was um, considerable effort had to be spent to try and get that stuff out. Um, the fuel oil for, uh, for the Manawanui, uh, it looks like it's more of a diesel um, type consistency, so uh, very much lighter. Uh, and with that, it's likely to evaporate off a lot more efficiently uh, as it comes to the surface. So the more um, potent or the more toxic um, shorter chain hydrocarbons that are probably in there will be evaporating off uh, much more effectively. So in, in regard to that, it's, it's probably the, the, the better of, of any fuel oil that could be uh, trapped on a ship. Another striking thing about Rena was that that force of, of that groundswell support, the volunteers helping with the clean-up. What lengths should New Zealand be going to here to clean up our mess? What does Samoa need from us? Um, there's much to be learnt from uh, the, the Rena experience with the power that I think it was about 8,000 uh, volunteers uh, brought to bear in, in 
handling the the washed up oil themselves uh, rather than using mechanized systems um, that they've tried elsewhere that tends to impregnate the oil deeper down into sand uh, so that volunteer army worked exceptionally well how that was coordinated was very important and i would imagine uh, the new zealand government with maritime new zealand in combination with with the Samoan government will be um, taking advantage of lessons learned from that and no doubt there would be just as strong a volunteer army uh, in Samoa that would be very, very eager to get out along the beaches to help with the clean-up operation. For sure. Hey, kia ora, Chris. Thank you very much for your time. That's Professor Chris Battishill from the University of Waikato. Kia ora.